who is a separate character. But anyway, mm. let's get let's get this party started. Okay. <clears throat> I've asked me hearties and welcome once again to full stream ahead. I be your captain, Charlie, the Professor Esser, and with me as always is me first mate and skinny rich friend. It's Maz. Welcome, Maz. In a world of capes and lunatics, gods and monsters, sometimes you need a good lawyer or two. That's when you call She-Hulk, attorney at law. Season one, episode eight. Eight, the penultimate episode. Take a drink. Ribbit and rip it. She Hulk mm. represents Leapfrog, who is injured injured due to a malfunction in his custom made super suit. Tonight's director, of course, is Cat Corio Cor- Coro. Uh, writers are, of course, uh, Cody Ziegler, our staff writer, created. For, by, for television by Jessica Gao. Uh, John Buscema and Stanley get that She Hulk created by credit. Uh, Dana Schwartz and Cody Ziegler, again, both working hard as staff writers. Oh my goodness. So, so much in this episode. And one of the things I do want to. So, okay. I'm just going to be honest. I don't like Luke Jacobs. Who's Luke Jacobs? Oh, that oh, the, is the, uh, the designer, designer. The designer. I like him. What are you? Why, why didn't you like him? Because he is a he is he is a diva. Right. right. He is not a good businessman. He right. is rude to people right. because he can be. Right. And I do not like people like that. That is, I mean, it's nothing against the actor. The actor is a fantastic actor, but I hate him as much as I hate Todd. Wow. And in fact, I'm actually going to go out on a limb on this right now. I would say Luke Jacobs is in the intelligentsia and Todd is just a red herring. I, I'm good. I don't I mean I think I think he's one of those characters that like he's endearing in his annoyingness, you know? Mm. It's like some people just turn the corner and then once they turn that corner they can do anything and you always view it in that light. I think for me at least he's turned that corner. And I think okay. they've really made us sort of love this character and, and and I don't think they would want to go back. They have something good here. Uh you know, the, you know, I don't know. Well, okay, cuz here's here's the big secret reveal. Uh-huh. Okay, that they are just dragging their feet to get to. Uh um the money in super um, su- uh, super services <clears throat> isn't for superheroes. It is for super villains. Superheroes very rarely need a lawyer, uh, especially now that it has been established that the Sokovia Accords are gone. Superheroes don't need lawyers. Super villains do, and super villains are always going to need lawyers because, and this is actually, and I think this goes back to the, I'm agnostic about it, um, which we don't hear what, uh, what, um, oh, what's his name? Um, it's the uh, Holloway. We don't hear what Holloway said in that walk and talk with uh, Jen, mm. where he's talking about, you know, and like, of the words you hear is money, 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 money. Um, and, you know, and he's talking about the ethical quandary of superhuman law. And when she says, I'm agnostic about it, he says, huh, interesting. Because you usually find people who are either going to say, I am more than happy to be a mob lawyer because I don't care about what they do. I just want the money, money, money. Hmm. And then there are people who say, you know, I would never be a mob lawyer because I know what they do. And um, I want this uh, and, and, and I uh, will not defend a, a guilty man or woman or uh, non-bar- non-binary uh, person. And then... But here's the thing is that a lawyer should be agnostic. A lawyer shouldn't really care 
about your status because a you are innocent until proven guilty even if even if we know you're guilty you know it's like you know what but that's actually the state's job to prove and the state similar to the journalists where you have to have a measure of objectivity Mm -hmm. with the things that you report and not be swayed by your own biases exactly and that's the idea here is that and that is what makes jen a good lawyer because jen knows the state is the biggest superpowered being the state is going to be the one that that has the power to grind superheroes and supervillains under a wheel because it's just presumed they're guilty. Hmm. But the state still has, has to prove that just because someone can turn into a fine mist doesn't mean that just makes them guilty, you know? And it is just the, the, just because you have superpowers Hmm. and maybe are committing crimes doesn't mean you committed this crime today. Right. And I think that's going to be this big reveal in the last episode. Hmm. Um, because I got a lot of theories on where we've gone and where we've built into this. And, you know, it, it goes into that thing we were discussing earlier about copaganda versus lawyer ganda. And how there is not really, well, actually, there are good lawyer ganda shows out there, like Family Law and other things, where it is about that defense team. But, of course, the juggernaut in the room, the juggernaut bitches, is Law and Order, which takes the lawyer ganda perspective but merges it with Copacan, hmm. where suddenly it is this idea of we're going to tell the lawyer's perspective as a part of the copaganda. Hmm. So now we're, 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 we're going to both – we're going to find our guilty people just like Columbo always does. And as Dick Wolf says, they'll be rich white dudes because no one cares when you attack which rich white dudes. Um, and we're going to see them as these heroes riding in to slay the the dragon of the criminal. Um, but I, I actually think that there is a place in this conversation for the fact that the state is more than happy to take the easy route and to just say, well, you were – you were at the scene with superpowers. We're not going to, we're, we're not going to waste a lot of time on this. Um, you know, and I think that that is, that is a real perspective that she Hulk can explore and has explored in the comics. And I think that's going to be the big reveal in that last scene where uh, it is going to be that, you know, he says, well, you know, we mostly defend supervillains and Luke Jacobs, mostly makes equipment for super va- uh um super for super villains super. because yeah yeah because you know what they gotta <laughs> that's you know you need money if you want all these fancy suits and there's a lot of ways to get money and a lot of them involve nefarious activities exactly tristan what do you say Don't get- he said, why would you get rid of good customers uh, who give you money? Tristan is being very far away. I told him if he wants to comment, he has to come close so he gets picked <laughs> up on the mic. But that is that is my delightful child. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you know, the, they're just making suits for people. What people choose to do with their suits, you can define yes. them later on, but I don't think you can define his involvement in any one way or the other. Mm-hmm. But I will make this very clear statement. I don't think Luke Jacobs gave detailed instructions on what sort of fuel to put into the jets. I do not think he expressly told him don't put in jet fuel. Because obviously, whatever he normally puts in there, first off, it might even be more potent than jet fuel. But it's designed to have that special, you know, that special burn. And also, if you have a special kind of chemical you put into it, then you have a repeat customer guaranteed. Whereas if he goes out and then just buys commercial jet fuel and put it in there, it's not going to have the right burn ratio. It may actually be too cool when it burns because you need to have something that has a certain amount of 
uh, explosiveness, but that, you know, the, the, the system is designed to process it in this way, and now it's being made to process it in another way, but it's not ready. It's like putting, it's like putting gasoline in a diesel engine. Right. Nobody's going to sell you a car and not tell you not to put diesel in it or tell you what kind of fuel you need. Yeah, exactly. But but what it is, is you can put gasoline in a diesel engine and it will have a But I'm saying, like, of course Luke Jacobs told him what to put and what not to put. You know, you you don't buy a car without somebody telling you what to put. Yes, but if if all he said was, oh, yeah, I'll provide you with the fuel and it's X amount of dollars every time you want fuel, a lot of people are going to start saying, well, what exactly is this fuel? But Why that, do I have I don't to think go that to him? was said at all? He just told him, you know, uh, uh, just in, the instruction specifically told you what to put in there. I don't think he was saying you can only get it from me. Well, I would wager that. Uh, see, that's an assumption on your part, and right, that's so is it. So is it on yours? Yes. I don't... Yeah, it's not showing up on the on the camera. Just in dangling a skeleton over me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, well, no, and yeah, and granted, it's an assumption. And when you assume, you make an ass out of you and me. Um, I, I would wait, but it, it is this idea of how is Luke Jacobson, and I, I want to make sure it's, is it, is, it's Luke Jacobson. I'm I feel like you me. have like a personal agenda against Luke J- Jacobson and are trying to find like the, no, I just know how business people it. are. Okay. I know how business people are. So somebody, somebody in business screwed you over that Luke Jacobson reminds you of. And you're like that guy. Well, you know what it is? It is, it it is that level of super villain esque confidence in his own work. Right. Okay. But that's just artists. I think that's just artists. Yeah. If you want to be on the show, you have to come down. Okay. Um, I think artists are always like that. My stuff. Well, yeah, many artists are, but not when it comes to product liability. Right. I mean, well, there that's are the thing, though. He's like, you know, these aren't like big old businesses with HR departments and legal departments. This is well, just an artist, you know, like underhandedly secret business. I doubt he even pays taxes, right? Well, he's I mean, that's a whole other bag of hammers, and that's right. an interesting. No, but my aspect. point is, this is an artist. This isn't a business. You know, you can't expect him to act like a like a business okay. with like a PR department saying, "Oh, you know." He's but just, you know what? All, all, he gets to artists... be himself because he's running an independent little thing that's under the table, uh, uh, off the grid kind of thing. Okay, but you know what? The minute you start charging money for your art, you're a business. Especially if yeah, you're charging enough that, money. Like again, artists. Especially are if you're they run charging enough money digital. for your art that yeah. you have security cameras and a secret lair, yeah. and all of the things that you have for this. At a certain point. You do cross the line from being simply so. For example, and this is one of the big things: is what happened to Melvin Potter. You know who we know also did make stuff for supervillains all the time. Was happy to, because that's the business. Just like the Tinker, happy to make stuff for the supervillains, because that's the business. Money is money, money, Tristan. Yes. And the reality is, is that um, once you once you cross that line, you can't just cross back. You can't suddenly have a moral compunction, even in the idea that. So, for example, people want to con- compare Luke Jacobs uh, to uh, what's your name from The Incredibles? Um, Edna, mm. you know, but Edna very clearly was working on government contracts to suit up superheroes specifically because she wanted to work with superheroes and it's Edna mode. And that it's actually, there's even a fun fan theory that she intentionally sabotaged um, syndrome because he likely came to her and said, you have to make my super suit says, okay, you get a Cape, Um, (laughs) you know, you know, just the idea that, you know, if you want to come to me, you know, I'm going to have this moral guidance. But in that level, the fact that he is immediately rejecting She-Hulk, who, yeah, again, reasons. What? For personal no, no, reasons. but even when, when, when she first shows up, even when she first, first shows up and he's being, first off, he's super into body shaming, <laughs> which I do not like. I do not appreciate. And it's a freaking, you know, she's... 
<laughs> she's an Avenger, okay? Not and yet. he's not getting Avenger. Like, well, like 18 of the Avengers don't know she exists yet. This is true. This well, there's aren't even 18 Avengers left. But yeah, it, it's it, it but it is just this idea that you know she has the bona fides, but he still has to put her down. And I don't like that as a personality trait. Okay. You know, I mean, I don't, I mean, maybe some people are into that, but to me, that's the toxicity. Oof. That's the toxic personality where it's like, dude, you, you, you know, we just like the book says, everybody poops and you do too. So don't act like you don't poop. Yeah. That's but just I my opinion. You, you know what I mean? Well, but she doesn't at no point is she like, you should do this for me because of who I am, aside from the fact that you have to understand my unique situation and kindly don't be mean to me about it. Yeah, but I don't have you know? to do anything for you either. I mean, but the thing is that if you were a good person, you would do something for her because you want to be a person who is helping good people. Yeah, but, and... but I don't owe that to you or to anybody. If I feel like it, whatever, this is, you know, it's like a get out of my store. Mm -hmm. I can refuse that. I mean, I understand. I understand your perspective. I just, like I said, the whole thing. And here's the thing. And again, like I said, you go to I that client. Think, I just uh, don't think any of these things are, are such a big deal. Uh, like life happens. You move on. You, you do things. You get things done. Getting hung up on these things. I don't know. It just. Yeah. Well, and, I, and again, I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm hung up on this because this is the job right now. We're doing <laughs> We're doing a show about who these characters are and how they affect each other yeah. within the context of... I don't think he's such a bad guy. I just think he's weird and eccentric. Oh, uh, yeah. And because he has a unique set of skills, he has uh, created a situation where he gets to be himself and express himself. And people mm -hmm. either deal with it or they don't. You want a suit? Come over here. But this is me, you know? So... Yeah, well, that's... See, and that's the thing. There are other characters like Big Ronda. Mm. who I love. Big Ronda is a character in Gwenpool. Mm. Who, but she is based on, in New York. So that, that's a good reason why she's not here. But she, again, see, that's the thing. is like There are people like Big Ronda who is more than happy to make super suits because this is a legitimate business. You know, and she works in, you know, like, I don't want to know what you're doing with it. Um... But yeah, if this is what you need, and this is what they have, they even stole one of Big Ronda's jokes in this, which is the reason why uh, Gwen Poole wears the pink and white, because mm. she just had a bunch of extra bolts of pink and white. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> and, uh, sewed it up for her, and there you go. Now now you have a super suit. Um, you know, the the it is, but what it comes down to is this idea of the industrialization of super humanity which is a real thing. And what I'm saying is don't get too attached to the service personnel because they probably are more than comfortable doing, doing bad as well. Um, and that's the thing. I, I absolutely think that whatever has happened and transpired, Luke Jacobson is making outfits for the constrictor and other groups like that, you know. I actually even think there's even some Doctor Oct wasn't there some Doctor Octopus claws in his in his shop. I don't know. That would be a little yeah much to put in there. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I think there was some there was some already, kind but... of uh, there was some kind of armor that was like uh, I don't know. Now, of course, and I, and again, when we get into this entire question about Leapfrog, and that is actually one of the most interesting aspects because Frogman who is named Eugene is a beloved character among super losers. You know, <laughs> he's a guy who has first off, and his art, his, he has pneumatic springs that allows him to jump. Whereas this guy has like rocket boots. And so, you know, I kind of feel like the, the rocket boots are one of the many ways that they're differentiating this Eugene from the real Eugene who we may someday see. We may see a Eugene Jr. who wants to redeem the Frogman legacy in the same way that the original Frogman was trying to 
redeem his father's leapfrog legacy. Exactly, the leapfrog legacy. Oh. Yeah, and they do call him leapfrog throughout it. Right. So, so even though it's implied that his family is this rich supervillain client um, or a client of GKL, GKL and H. Um, yeah, GK, yeah. Goodman, uh, Kurtzberg, Lieber, and Holloway. Even though they imply that, it is actually the reality that, um, you know, they do a lot of business and superhuman law is just something that they have to do now because, you know, they had a lot of evil people working for them, you know, Roxxon Corporation and all of these other groups that are very important and powerful in the world. Uh, and then, you know, supervillainy just starts creeping in because, well, I guess we need to have some supervillains now. So, you know, it makes sense that they follow through in that line. Um, and, and that, and to me, that's the thing. And that's, that is the, that is this big thing. And I, and I, my, my big thing, my big thing for the twist um, is the secret identity of Hulk King, who I do not think is Todd. No, and, no, no. But I don't like Todd. No, I, I don't like Todd either. But I think Todd is just your average rich jerk who is obsessed with celebrity. Right. He's, you know, and that's the thing. It's like, and, it's, and he's been co-opted or corrupted or whatever, but he's involved in the plot somehow. He might not be the head, but he's involved. I actually don't even sure. think he is. Hmm? I don't even think he is. I think he's just like when he buys the spear and that's the whole thing. He buys a Wakandan spear, hmm. but also mentions that he did a summer abroad in Wakanda, which means that he got, yeah, well, you know, you're rich and there's a, there, there's a whole Secret country. Of you think super they science. let him in there? I think that I think that if they're opening their borders, they got you oh know, fair enough, right, 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 right. You know, they're yeah. they're opening their borders. You're going to have tourists. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. he comes in, and I'm sure they have hotels in Wakanda, and you know, and his money spends as good as anybody else's money. True enough. So yeah, you know, so why not? And and he's there, and he's absorbing the local court culture. And granted, he's he's absorbing it with a with a jaundice eye. Yeah, man, no, it does it does uh, man. make everyone a little uncomfortable. Oh, man. But they, they really nailed that cringe factor on that one. You yes, know? yes. But you know, but again, it's this idea that I can totally see it being him. Honestly, just wanting to be a part of the story. And feeling that, you know, yeah, but he's, he's got not 50 eyes like he's up to something. I know, but you know what? So do a lot of rich people. Yeah, I know, but but <laughs> I'm 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 trusting my gut on this one. Those eyes yeah. are telling me he's up to something. I mean, uh, I guess I guess to me, that's the low-hanging fruit. Fair enough. To me, because that's the thing. It's like here's here's the deeper, here's the deeper twist. I think Hulk King is Amadeus Cho. Who's that? Amadeus Cho is the eighth smartest man in the world. Yes, he's also the ultimate, sp the Iron Spider in Ultimate Spider-Man, mm -hmm. um, and he is currently a character named Braun because he did get the, he did steal the Hulk's powers, and became a um, super strong hulk mm. um and it is very interesting if you actually go back because and again it goes into this idea of perspective amadeus cho basically basically his story is he won he won a radio well he's not a radio contest but he won you know a contest called the um what the the um what was it called the mastermind excello smartest person in the world contest kind of thing and he like got so much money uh for passing the max uh the mastermind excello quiz as the eighth smartest person in the world mm -hmm. um yeah it's it's a good thing and his basic shtick is he's one of these guys who like one of the things he always does is he'll like 
throw something, it'll ricochet off six walls and then hit you in just the right spot to make you unconscious. Gotcha. You know, so so he's always doing the math and everything is a math problem to him. Hey, it's it's kind of like what Daredevil's been doing uh, mm-hmm. this season with like ricocheting stuff and hitting people with his little. Yes. Oh, we'll get to Daredevil in a minute because he beat that poor crippled guy. What? And there's a guy who is crawling away uh-huh. from him, and you see him just beat him. Unmerciful. He's not a cripple. He's just, you know, five has two broken legs. Five seconds ago, he was just fine. You know, this yes, is but now, the same scenario. now he's, yeah, now but he's, 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 a, he's a, they define the difference between a goon and a henchman pretty well, uh, which I appreciated. I thought well, that yeah, was really, yeah. really cool. Um, yeah. and like, I, I mean, was, you know, I think he deserved it. He was asking for it. Um, and he got uh, it. You know, I don't think it's right for anyone to beat someone yeah. who is crawling away. I don't think I, I see that's just me. And see, yeah. that's what the, if he goes and grabs a phone and, and, and calls for backup, and all of a sudden the jig is up. You know well, but the jig is already up. I mean, that's the thing. They're, they're breaking. I'm, into I'm this saying, like, we're involved in 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 fighting. There's no room for niceties. It's a different level. Well, that we're engaging. except it's except they're fighting. Except they're perspective. Except upon. they're fighting leapfrog. Like if they were, if this was a Hydra base. Maybe you can make that uh, argument. But I actually think that there is, in fact, when you have his lawyer working with you, who likewise immediately comes in and says, I am helping you. I am your lawyer. You need to stop this right now. Maybe we can make this argument Hmm. about, you know, temporary insanity, yada, yada, yada. Okay, well, (laughs) formulate your thought and then then add it in in a moment. Um, (laughs) Well, yeah, I mean, that was the that was one of the things it's like at say? the very start of this, which Matt can hear the two guys are like talking about how they're not into this gig. You know, they are hired goons. They are. They are or and I, and I forget which one they said are hench and which are goons. I really don't care. These guys are clearly hired workers. They're not there because of the ideology of of sure. leapfrog. Sure. They're not seeking to further the leapfrog agenda. They are literally there for a paycheck. And and the fact of the matter is, when you beat a crippled man unmerciful, I'm sorry. Did you see his legs move, Maz? Before he got hit? Yes. Well, yeah. After he, after he, yeah. So after he crippled him. Nobody diagnosed him as a cripple. Nobody said on a form, yes, he's a cripple. You know what I mean? Okay. Like I'm just. Part of the, he was a regular guy who hurt his leg and then was trying to get away uh, after being caught for doing something what, nefarious and evil. What I can say. Well, first off, what is he doing that's nefarious and evil aside from guarding a compound? Now, Leapfrog has done something nefarious and evil. Yeah. And you're yes. guarding that guy. Ah, you're, you know, you're I mean, intending and threatening to do violence upon somebody that tries to uh, do something to him, right? Yeah, that well, intention, yeah. that threat, that that uh, you know, uh, saying to the universe, "Hey, this is who I am. I'm ready to do violence again." You know, okay, that that's got to mean something. Yeah, I don't know, man. I I, I I I agree with you to a certain extent, but I also think that we have to keep in check the violence because if nothing else one of the things that we see in this is how quickly violence escalates when jen decimates a parking structure when she's trying to stop daredevil um who has you know um who is trying to stop leapfrog who has kidnapped luke jacobs but and again, this is one of these things where um, had Matt Murdock called Jennifer Walters and said, "Yes, it appears that your client has kidnapped my client. He's at a place called uh, the Lily Pad." And you know, maybe they could have solved this earlier. No, but I think I think Matt Murdock, in in his mind, has gotten to a place where he even says it to her. You know, you can do certain things as a lawyer, but there's certain things you can't do as a lawyer that you need this other side of yourself to be able. Well, to- yeah, but but again, within that within that statement, is that a true statement? 
I don't know. But is he that a true? It, but, well, yeah. yeah, he believes it, but that, but again, that's one of the. I'm just saying that's where, why he didn't call Jen Walters, right? I know, but this is what, and this is why I say Matt Murdock is a bad lawyer, right? Now I agree with you there. <laughs> I'm waiting for Legal Eagle to to do a whole thing on yeah. the She Hulk series. I, I hate that they give him opportunities to keep saying because I'm a good lawyer. I was like, oh, are you really? Yeah, where 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 were where were you a good lawyer except in the fact that um you know you know like like I said you know Foggy Nelson is a good lawyer. I would love to see a Foggy Nelson cameo. But Come on, they need to bring Foggy Nelson back. Yes, they do. But anyway, but uh, yeah, and that's the thing is she's taking advice from a bad lawyer. Yeah. Yes, he won the case mostly because well, yeah, he used his powers, but more importantly, Jen did not do proper discovery. She should have done proper discovery, and she knows that. And that's the thing. It's like too much got laid on her, and she did not do proper work because she did not take the job seriously. That was the problem. She mm. was too worried about the Luke Jacobs gown to really address us, and then she let her passions run away with her, which, of course, is true for Hulk, which is what Hulk was trying to say. And, and in many ways, for all of the complaints about earlier episodes all of their complaints are being addressed about what the danger is with rage Hmm. when you're a hulk because yes you know she is much more adept at controlling her rage but that doesn't mean she doesn't get angry she can still experience a normal amount of rage and when we get to the final scene where she gets doxxed at the Female Lawyer of the Year Awards, which honestly, again, of all things that seem staged, this seems somehow more staged than the wedding. Yes, because like her her other lawyer friend knew she was getting the award. Uh, Somehow all the other women knew that it was going to be all these women. She was the only one that seemed under the impression that she was the only one getting the award. Yeah, because I get the feeling they give it out every year to all of these top lawyers, you know? Right. And it doesn't mean they're not the, because trust me, there's a lot more than eight female lawyers in LA. Right. Um, you know, I found it interesting that also that they gave the award to Jen Walters and she shows up as She Hulk. Yes. I thought well, they would have given the award to She Hulk. Well, no, because they're giving it to Jen Walters, She Hulk. And her legal name is Jen Walters. I guess, yeah. and he, she even makes the the joke about that when when it comes into it. No, that, he and, said Jennifer Shield. Oh, Jennifer Shield, yeah, in the in the common parlance, just like how it's Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Mm. Um, so in this moment, um, she thinks she's going to be the only recipient, but you know, she's not obviously. <laughs> You know, and not for nothing, there's a lot of awards that work like this because award shows sort of operate on uh, self-congratulation. Hmm. You know, so it's like, oh, yeah, we're going to have these awards and we just need people to show up and no one's going to buy a table at the event unless they're getting an award. Yeah, and that, that's that's super shady, though. That's really, really not cool. Yeah, but, you know, but and, and to be fair, it's like even groups that are like legitimate legitimate groups like bar associations Mm. will set up things like this. But if they're going to do an event, you know, you need to pay for the event. And if you're going to pay for the event, you need people to come and buy tables and, and, you know, receive awards. It's, it's weird. I don't, I'm not in that business myself, but I understand how that business works. Um, Anyway. So she gets doxxed by, um, by the intelligentsia in this um which i found it i found really interesting and again she makes this point it's like do you want to know who she hulk really is and she's like i don't have a secret identity you know yeah you and know like, no, what are they really trying to prove what does that show it doesn't say anything about anything it's just no it's just it's a bunch of stuff and it's her being it's i mean literally what they wanted to do was they wanted to slut shame her like it doesn't <laughs> no i know it doesn't matter and 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 but you know what it's i it would be rough you know so there are nude photos out of me out there i've been to burning man and and these things exist mm. 
and well, I'm not ashamed of them. Um, and these were things that were taken with my consent. Mm. If stuff was taken without my consent, yeah, and especially if it involves other people and particularly recent right betrayals, right. which Josh, it, it just seems like doing that only gains sympathy to her mm-hmm. cause from people, it doesn't make her look bad. That That's see what I'm, that, it's a counter, and yeah, and and. Of- and and to be fair, that's what Mallory tells her in that moment. Because Mallory sees what's about to happen. And she tells her, don't. Yeah. Don't. Because she knows. Yeah, I know you want to do that right now. I guess the point was know to get you... her to Hulk out. That's what they wanted to show. That's yeah. Not... Well, they wanted to yeah, they wanted yeah. to put her in a dangerous situation where she is causing damage. And by that point, mm. to be fair, because she did leave a note at the parking structure. Yeah. You know, uh, the Department of Damage Control was already there. You know, like they, they knew that, oh, we better just watch this because things are getting out of hand here, you know? Wait, hold on. Yeah. Technically, if she hope didn't say that, if she hope didn't leave a note, would they have just thought it was just some random superhero that caused trouble? No, they probably had cameras. Although, you know, it's also possible that someone could have blamed it on an earthquake, but because it is LA. But mm-hmm. in this moment, you know, um, they do a lot of damage, and both heroes do a lot of damage, expressly because both heroes are acting like they don't have to follow process or procedure. Daredevil doesn't do that much damage. Most of the damage. Well, only because he can't. Yeah, you know, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, um, but the but the real point of it is is just that this is what, and this is where I'm going to say this is going to be the big thing that Jen embraces at the end. Hmm. It's like, no, I am a lawyer, and I am a, I am specifically a defense lawyer. And yes, it's nice when I get to defend good people against Roxon, but just because you're Roxon doesn't mean you just are automatically assumed guilty right you know um you need to be defended and i think that's what we're going to get at the end of this and i think that because the whole thing with amadeus cho being the hulk king oh by the way i do love that he's hulk underscore king Hmm. when they flashed it which actually means that on that server someone else already had the name hulk king um that's funny he's like or maybe they just don't allow spaces on that server Mm. True, but usually then you just put the words together, like my own name, Charlie Esser. Um, <laughs> yeah, or you put a period. There's several ways you can do it. The the use of the underscore, I think, is is specifically shows that you know there was there was already someone using the name and he couldn't get it. Well, why couldn't he just use Hulk King but replace the I with the one? I mean, he could do that too. There's lots of ways you could do it, but really in that situation it's actually really sad that you know that there were like several other options that they used that mm-hmm. none of them were available. but um anyway but i so i think it's amadeus cho expressly because amadeus cho was a big stand of the hulk and was always willing to excuse his destruction of harlem his breaking of things but that let me talk that um you know, because he said, but no one no one died. As if all that matters in a person's life is that they don't die. And there's actually a really good scene in the World War Hulk series, which is where he's 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 introduced, where he is honestly just the biggest jerk you're ever gonna meet. Hmm. He's very unlikable, even as he is also very likable, you know, much in the way that you feel about uh uh, Luke. Luke Jacobs, and maybe I feel a bit more empathy towards Todd about you know, it's like he's a smarmy worm. I hate that guy's face. Oh yeah, you know I and, hate and him I too. Think, I think they want me to, and and I'm yeah, happy. No, no, it. but but see, to me, I think that they want you to hate him, expressly because at the end of the day, he's not doing anything horrific. Yeah, he's like that guy that goes, "I'm not rich. touching. I'm not touching." Exactly. Not, you know, like. Ugh hate that guy exactly tristan he i i think he's meant to be a red hair that you're meant to be focusing on this obvious rich jerk Mm. 
and then you don't think about oh what are the other options yeah well who are the other people see what who could be year. the rich jerks he turns out to be the bad guy oh no 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 well yeah well then you can oh, rub it in my face to be next a week. bad guy like he's he's definitely yeah. involved in the plot somehow yeah but like i said see to me and it's it's one of these weird things where it's like you know if i wanted to be a super villain i'd be a super villain i don't want to be a super villain i want to just enjoy living in a world where superheroes exist mm. and sort of just be a tangent tangential hanger on mm. you know it's like it's like a person who you know they don't necessarily want to be a celebrity but they really want to go to the party mm. you know they want to go to the party where black panther is at right and you know and quite frankly if that's sort of that thing if he was invited to wakanda to return the spear I would I could totally see this idea of him being honored as this guy who reclaimed the spear for Wakanda. And they threw a little party for him, just like the lady lawyer party. <laughs> and he got to say, yeah. This is given by Todd, whatever my last name yeah. is, yeah. to yeah. you. Um it'll go in the history books as a hero for our people for bringing back our property that was stolen from us years ago. Exactly. Well, to be fair, we don't know when this was stolen. This could have been one of the ones that was like left in um in uh, uh South Korea. Hmm. Um, when they left the car and everything else they when they had to Either, run. Yeah, but no, that that's the way to approach that situation. Somebody should have went and pitched that idea to him. They would have gotten it back yeah. real easy. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, and, but that's the thing. But that's the thing about legal issues. They're, they're they're raising a thing, and then a good lawyer, in the negotiation process, raises up. Okay, well, t- how about if he gives it back to you, and we're gonna put make a little ceremony, make him feel special, let him meet the Black Panther if he's still mm-hmm. alive at this point, or whoever the current Black Panther is. Maybe get Luke Cage to show up and you know take some photo ops with him. You know. All because that, that that's what he wants. He wants yeah. that he wants yeah. that Instagrammable stuff to say, this is the world I live in. So you know, and, and I think that although it's creepy, it's not evil. Right, but I think and, also people like that are easily corruptible, easily bought. Yeah, or they or they are actually the hardest to buy because they're already rich. So no, they're no, 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 not not buy. not by money, but bought by access, bought by, you know, things like, oh, meeting this person. Oh, you'll get a piece of this if you do this. Oh, yeah, yeah. When that desire is so strong, they're easily led and directed. Yeah, and that can be the case too. But like I said, there's also the there's also the counter explanation, which is like there's also some sort of uh smug joy in not being a Nazi. Hmm. Like I'm not gonna join Hydra. I know that you're Nazis. So, you know, expressly because I know you're Nazis, I get to refuse you because I don't need your money. And there's not really anything you can give me aside from, you know, what, meeting the latest Red Skull, you know, or uh, an object of power. But does he actually want an object of power, you know, except to put on his except to put on his mantelpiece? It's like if he had an infinity gauntlet on his mantelpiece, he's like, oh, yes, that old thing. Sort of like Odin's throne room, mm. you know? Mm. <laughs> you can have an infinity gauntlet in your throne room. But just to look but, at. Yeah, but just to look at. It's like, you know, he's, you know, it's, it's like off. the great the great gazoo. If you ever remember yeah. from the Flintstones, the great gazoo, why he's sent to the primitive world of Earth is because he created a button that would destroy everything. Everything in the universe, if he just pushes the button. Since I was never going to use it. I just wanted to be the first one on my block to have one. <laughs> That's funny. And they just deemed that too too far beyond the pale, and they sentenced him to to be the uh, magical uh, Martian for uh, Fred and Barney. So. <laughs> uh, you know, but that's the idea. And that to me, that's who Todd, that's who Todd is. Um, he's just a guy who wants to have it. He doesn't necessarily want to be he doesn't want to use it. He's not going to use it to like try and pierce um, Jen's flesh, but it's meant to be that red herring to send you down that lane. Hmm. That's the thing. They're using the red herrings expressly for that purpose. Okay. That's my idea. Cause I think it's too obvious if they're not, if they do go that obvious route, okay, I'll, I'll you know, you'll allow it because yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if it's that complex of a show. I, I think it is. I think it's a lot more complex than people are giving it credit for. Hmm. Uh, and maybe I'm wrong, <laughs> uh, 
but to me, it's it like the, next week. She did mention the Red Hulk, so uh, I'm excited for that. Yeah, has well, it we'll been see. confirmed that it, it's Harrison Ford or not yet? No, no, no. I don't think any of that is. Well, I, I guess there was something. Maybe they're saying there was something at a Comic Con. Yeah, I don't know. Recasting. Um, I don't know why they wouldn't just do. I think it was was it Sam Elliott or? Oh, that would be great. Yeah, the, the guy who played uh, Thunderbolt Ross in in the in the Ang Lee Hulk. Yeah, because there is there is another variant Thunderbolt Ross. I actually don't see Harrison Ford as a Thunderbolt Ross type. That's my honest opinion. Um, I think he's too soft spoken for the role. It's like you know, it's because I mean, he's a really, good he's a really good actor. I think I he's mean, a like, really he's good fun. actor. But it's like, could you imagine him as J. Jonah Jameson? As an example, I mean, I, I think if he put his acting chops to work, I he could make me believe yeah, it. I okay, think. I mean, maybe, maybe it, it's entirely possible. And honestly, if they do that stunt casting, it is it's going to be acceptable. I'm sure it's going to be wonderful. But I kind of feel like you know what, there's enough actors out there hmm. that can embody that role again. Um, especially, like I said, with the possibility, and I hope I'm remembering his name correct. That it's Sam Elliott. Um, you know. Uh, I think that that is one that's going to be a lot more acceptable to people hmm. and also probably a little cheaper for the company. Um, you know, yeah. Harrison Ford costs money if you want him to do a movie nowadays. Uh, absolutely. But it's become like, you know, that that uh, that status symbol now in Hollywood. Everybody wants to have done a Marvel movie. It's turned the corner and now everybody <laughs> wants to be in one. Yeah, but I don't know if he's going to want to be a Red Hulk. And you got to remember, like, General Ross is a real central character. Yeah. You know, I mean, he, lo- and, and to be fair, he really likes playing Indiana Jones to the point where he has, like, said, no one else will ever be Indiana Jones. That is my, that is my baby. I mean, and honestly, to me, that kind of feels like a little Dr. Smithian, where, like, you know, um, the actor who played Dr. Smith wanted to come back and play Dr. Smith again in the reboot series. And they were like, you're a hundred years old, man. I don't know if this is going to work. It's like, well, what about Dr. Smith says he's a young man. Um, you know, and it's a fair cop, but also it's, it's, it's a weird thing too. Yeah. And it's like, uh, I don't know, man. Um, you know, I don't know if, I don't know if he is looking to be part of another franchise at this point in his career. You That's know, fair. yeah, he has he because he has Indiana well, Jones. I mean, He's already going to do. They were able to find enough money to bring Wolverine back. Yeah, but he was already in the franchise. Fair enough. You know that that's the thing. It's like that but one I think was the 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 lack of desire to be part of like a big concept sort of thing for a long amount of time is, is the same for both of them. And if they were I able know. to bribe him back, I'm sure they could find something to get him there. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I I guess I just come back to the fact that he 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 really hated Star Wars. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like every day. Is there any way you can kill me this episode? <laughs> Please kill, him. Please, I'm begging you, George. I'll be Indiana Jones forever. Just kill Han Solo. That's my only <laughs> request. <laughs> you know, it's, I, which is weird because I think Han Solo is a cool character. I don't yeah. know why he's so mad about it, except that maybe it's in space and he doesn't like to go to space. I, know. I don't I mean, know. I think maybe he's always been like the old curmudgeon. Yeah, I don't know. It's entirely well, you know. But for what it's worth, that's why he was so good in that because Indiana Jones and um, and uh, Han Solo are both always, even when they're young, they're still very curmudgeonly. Yeah, <laughs> and and you know he's a. See, and that's that's my biggest thing is I don't think of um, Ross as a curmudgeon. Right. I see him as more angry and rage filled. And gold. Which is why he's a perfect Red Hulk. Yeah. You know. And so I, it's like I've, I don't know how many times I've seen um, uh, Harrison Ford be angry and rage filled. But that's yeah. that's just my opinion. Um. Uh. We see that at the gala, you know, they do the doxing, and we see that there's a bunch of people in their masks, you know. And that's the other thing is I do get the feeling these are younger people, which Amadeus Cho is a teenager. Oh. 
So the idea that this is just like, you know, a bunch of little wannabe hackers, you know, uh, in the background who are just total, total, total Hulk stands that that's, and they're not, and they may not, are they don't necessarily need to be the intelligence yet. They just need to be co-opting the name. And in fact, maybe you might get something like the leader actually um, is manipulating them saying, well, now you're in the intelligentsia too. You're just like us hulks. Why don't you go and what are we going to do about this woman who has stolen the hulks power? Mm. You know, because, and of course, it's because when you think about the timeline, there was a hulk. Then he moderates his power to be back to Banner. So suddenly we don't see the hulk anymore. All of a sudden, when She-Hulk shows up on the scene, Hulk is now off world. And so everything looks like this is this person who has decided to steal the Hulk's power and Hulk is gone. Hmm. And because she hasn't told everyone, no, it was just a freak accident with me and my cousin and my cousin's off world right now, because no one asked her and why is she going to volunteer this? Right. It allows it allows for a conspiracy to fill the void, right? And the conspiracy is she stole her cousin's power. Yeah, they did mention yeah. something like that—a power that you didn't deserve or that you didn't earn, mm. or something like that. Now, the other my other theory is that Ched is the actual uh, head of the intelligentsia that we see. Oh my god! But that would be terrible. That would be terrible, except it would be like this big reveal. No, I am the genius in the family, and I deserve the powers the whole time. I don't think that's mm. who Chet is, but I will say that Chet is always there at times yep. where Jen's life is being screwed yeah. up. Yeah, Like with the She-Hulk uh, items, mm -hmm. where he brings it to her. No, I'm just trying to help you with your gig. Right, um, right, that's right, not right, me. Right. You know, it's like, you know, I'm, he's at the wedding where she shows up. So I don't know, man. Maybe there's something there, or maybe he's just meant to be the comic relief. You know, I think he's just comic relief too. Although I do like Chad. Yeah. Yeah, it would be a big twist, but I think the bigger twist is Amadeus Cho, and you give him a redemptive arc at the end, where maybe uh, the Hulk shows back up and says, "Why are you doing this, Amadeus? Hmm. Like, well, she stole your powers." Like, no, she didn't. What are you talking about, you stupid little kid? Yeah. Um, but then he has to go and become, okay, I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Jim. I hope so. Well, I mean, I hope it's something more interesting than that. I hope there's like well, well, bigger, well, deeper reasons like of getting the blood to create the Red Hulk and that Valerie's involved. Well, other people could be. That's the thing. Yeah. That's, where, that's where a character like the leader who is maybe manipulating a guy like Amadeus Cho, who is we will remember is only the eighth smartest person in the world, which means he's super smart. And one thing about super smart people is the smarter they think they are, the easier they are to fool hmm. because they go, Oh, wow. You, exactly. My perception, my judgment is unquestionable. So it's exactly. Yes. He's actually like, you know, three or four. So he's right up there with the rest of them. Yes, he probably could trick Amadeus Cho. All right. Uh, so there's a lot of cool people. Oh, big pitch. Uh, Danny DeVito should be cast as the Red Ghost. Oh. If they decide to do that with the Fantastic Four, is have Danny DeVito come back as the Red Ghost. If you've ever seen the Red Ghost, this is the Russian attempt to recreate the the Fantastic Four event, oh. where the Red Ghost is this little short fat scientist with his three super is it three I can't remember if it's three or four super apes, but they all go into space they get cosmic radiated, and they come back and like the gorilla has magnetism powers the Red Ghost can become intangible. The in each of his super apes that he is trained and respond to his mind uh are super powered uh hmm. are really cool and so that's my big pitch that sounds Marvel. really fun yeah i would love to see get me some super apes and the red ghost played by denny devito hmm. i know the man can do a russian accent i'm sure 
and he would be perfect. Put him in that red, red fur lined jumpsuit. That man is going to chew that scenery like it was made of uh, made of Melba toast. So, all right, uh, Maz, any final thoughts on tonight's episode before our penultimate episode? Take a drink. Mm. No, I think I'm all out. Um, before we get to our well, I take a vape. Um, before we get to our final episode, uh, what are your thoughts? Where are we going next? Uh, Big predictions, Maz. I, I don't know if I have any predictions. I just hope it's it's a satisfying ending uh, to a fun ride. I hope it's not okay. something as silly as just a bunch of kids being goofy, thinking that she stole her powers. I hope that there's a deeper conspiracy that is revealed that actually is real. Um, okay. They mentioned Red Hulk. It'd be nice to send us a little further down that road. You know, they could always bring back. I was at Liv Tyler who played Betty Banner. Mm. Um, bring her back as the she as the Red She Hulk. That would be pretty cool. A Red She Hulk. Wow. Okay. Yeah, because there is a oh. there's a Red She Hulk too. Oh, because yeah. that. Oh yes. Oh yeah. She actually has a really cool story. Oh. Um, where she's actually an agent of the original Brotherhood of the Shield. There's so much lore. Wow. And honestly, it's all there. And Mar and Foggy, God bless his heart, he has moved all the pieces to where stuff that's in the comics can come back at any time. Mm. And we, we can definitely get the revelation of the ancient Brotherhood of the Shield. Um, but he doesn't have to if it's not the exact right moment. So that, that's what's beautiful about comic books, about created lore and everything else that we're dealing with. So, um, yeah, I, I've already given all my predictions. So, um, Maz, if people would like to reach out to you, uh, how can they find you? Oh, they can email me at mazmanzor at gmail.com or find me on Facebook under Maz Manzor. That's M-O-Z-Z-M-A-N-Z-O-O-R. And meanwhile, kids, if you would like to write to us uh, and talk to us about all the wonders that are She-Hulk, are all the things that stream in the night, um, you can write to us at capesandlunatics at gmail.com. That's capes and lunatics at gmail.com. That's all one word, all spelled out. You can likewise call us and leave us a voicemail at 614 382 2737. That's 614 38 capes, if you remember how there's a way to transpose letters into numbers on a telephone. <laughs> and of course, go down to linktree, L A N K T R dot E slash capes and lunatics and buy all of our merch like. Uh, aluminium mugs and just give us money on patreon where you will get to vote on what we do on these shows you can be a a participant in the world of the capes and lunatics friends uh so we really encourage you to do that uh we are wrapping up the worst uh superhero movies of all time um and we and you can vote on that and you can also vote on what we do next meanwhile if you just want to write to me myself Charlie Esser, old man of the comic books. You can do so at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. And superconnectivity is coming back probably in November. Hmm. And, of course, you can always follow me when I live tweet things when I feel like it, at Charlie Esser. That's C-H-A-R-L-I-E-E-S-S-E-R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For quality. Bing! Thank you, Maz. All right, yeah, filthy land lovers. You've come through the gauntlet of the internet and all the streaming there is to see. Thank you for joining us. And please come aboard next week as we once again sail full stream ahead. Arrgh. All right. All right.